How's it going, everybody? Uh, welcome to the next session. I think we're up to session number six on the Skills Canada Saskatchewan coding kits and some professional development uh, sessions. So far, we've uh, dealt with the basics of the micro bit, uh, things the micro bit can do itself, uh, as well as various add on sensors that can be added to it. Um, Today, we're going to start taking a look at the next set of things, um, which is much more of a micro bit output. In, in particular, we're going to look at motors and servos. Uh, so how we can use the micro bit to control uh, movement of things. Uh, from there, we may get into some activities today, maybe next session. But we'll take it all from there. Um, let me very quickly just show you what I'm talking about here now. So this is the stuff that we've been dealing with so far. The micro bit here and the climate action kit uh, expansion board. Uh, we started using some sensors and different things here. If you recall from last time, uh, we did ultrasonic sensors and touch sensors and some of that stuff. Uh, well, now I want to move into the use of motors. Uh, and we're also going to get into servos here in a little bit. Uh, so motors are a little bit different in the sense that we're no longer looking for information from them to do things we're actually going to use the kits to cause something to happen in here uh, a motor is a very simple device um, they come in a lot of varieties lots of different sizes lots of different complexities uh, but essentially it uh, takes a signal in which is either power or not supplied power and it causes a spinning motion here um, the shaft here will spin. Now we can uh, we can utilize all of that with a variety of different things here. Um, you see this fan one that uh, is included with the kits. I have just directly connected onto the motor shaft, uh, and that's just pressed on. There's no screws or anything in there. Uh, it's just a press on pressure fitting connected directly to the motor shaft. Um, You'll also notice we have some of these guys. Um, uh, a motor with kind of a yellow box on it uh, with two wheels. Now this yellow box is actually a gear shaft or a gear box, um, which will take the rotational energy from here, which is again, the same motor as here, just spinning it, but actually uh, runs it through some gears and this one uh, turns it into motion that's perpendicular to the spinning. Um, if we really want to go crazy in depth, we can talk more about gearboxes at a at a later time. There, don't want to get too bogged down in that um, right now. Uh, again, these uh, wheels here are also just pressure fit directly onto the shaft here. Um, you'll notice that these wheels spin together so it's a single shaft here if you put them in there and well, it's kind of hard to see maybe um and yeah these motors are brushed dc motors um again there's different types of motors some are brushless some are dc some are ac um, these ones are brushed dc motors which means they have two wires coming from them if you supply power in one direction, it's going to spin the motor one way. Supply power in the other direction, it'll spin the motors the other way. Um, I think that's pretty much what we want to focus on right now. Uh, just to show how these move, um, I'm going to guys up the way for a second. I'm just going to take this little battery pack, uh, which holds two, um, two AAA batteries, so a three volt output. Uh, I like to put them in here directly just to make sure they're working. And you see, we'll get a spin there. Um, 
this spins very, very fast because it's connected directly to the motor. And you will notice it doesn't matter which way we put it in, it will still spin. It's just the direction of spin. Um, what you may be able to see a little better here is a little different. So let me connect these guys up here. So in here, I'm gonna have the black and the black connected and the red to red connected just to show that this does work. So we can see the, the wheels are spinning there. Now, if I switch this, so it's a red to black and a black to red, you'll see they're, they're again spinning. Um, you will notice they weren't spinning too fast and they were pretty easy to uh, stop here. These motors like a five or six volt input. This is only a three volt input, so it wasn't very strong, but it's good enough for testing. Now, when we want to use a motor with a micro bit and this kit, we, we do need an expansion board on the micro bit to use a motor properly. And we actually need additional output. If you'll notice on the micro bit here, it just says 3V. Let's see there, yeah, 3V. That means it'll only actually provide three volts. These motors like more than that. In fact, most motors like more than three volts. So we actually need an external battery supply of some form. I have this, this is just an external USB power bank that will supply the five volts uh, when we connect it in here. If you don't have one of these, that's okay. Um, you can connect a USB cord directly from a computer into here and it will also provide the five volts. That's, that's not a worry there. Um, I will say before we get going, be careful with the motors. Um, these are moving parts now. They're going to be moving. They're going to want to move. And when things want to move, whenever they're powered to move, they will, which can drag things off or out of an area. And they can cause some safety issues. Um, particularly if you're doing something with like a fan blade, if a finger gets in there, it can get really damaged. Uh, things with wheels, if they're just set on the ground or set on the table, they will drive off. And we don't want anything um, driving off that shouldn't be driving off. So we like to keep something under them so that we can keep the wheels off the table or something just to hold this kind of up here a little bit. Um, I'm going to take a quick look around and just see what I have available here. Uh, actually, I'm going to run right next door to our shop super quick and just grab a couple pieces of scrap wood that we can hold some stuff off of. So I will be back in one second. Okay, so I went out and just grabbed a couple pieces of wood um, and I'm gonna grab a little bit of tape as well just to secure these things down here. So I'm gonna attach this little motor here. Uh, it will be off the ground enough. I'm just gonna tape it on there so that we don't have anything wobbling around. Um, 
this is again for testing purposes. If I was going and putting this into a robot, I would probably have something more secure than tape. Um, but for this example, tape will work uh, just fine. Okay. That guy's on there. I'm going to do a very similar thing here with this guy. Uh, I don't both pieces of wood, so I'll just cram one of them there. Um, I'm going to, again, just tape this down here so it's holding on there. Um, again, not something I would want to do as a permanent installation, but uh, this is something that will keep things safe for me here for this purpose. So um, I think that's a pretty key and important thing. And there we have it. Okay, I'm going to put a little piece of tape just to, down the front here, too. And there we go. So again, just a little bit of tape to hold it on there. Um, right now, it's just something to keep it off the ground. If I was using this in a robot, uh, with something bigger built on it, I'd probably just have a table stand, um, like this wood stand, just holding it here that it could balance on. But the key here is that the wheels won't be touching the ground. So we have our fan, we have our wheels, they're not going to be touching the table. Now we're ready to get started on actually using and, and moving these. So um, before I connect the micro bit in, I'm going to do the wiring on these here. Now on this uh, breakout board here, which is this Inksmith uh, Climate Action Breaking Board or Breakout Board, we have two spots for motors to go, and that's indicated by that uh, gear symbol. So here is one spot. This is going to be for one of our motors. Here is the other spot for the other one of our motors. They will have a positive and a negative. We usually like to keep the red as the positive, the black as the negative, if there is a red and black. Um, otherwise, it's really just for polarization, so we, we know the orientation. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to grab a couple of our um, jumper wires. And you'll notice because these motors both have pins on the end, I'm going with the female to alligator clip wires on both. So I'm going to grab a couple. Let's go like this. So on this little fan guy, I'm going to use this brown and gray one. Uh, we don't have an indication uh, based on the outright look of the wires that they're they're both red on here. So we can really connect either one in either direction. It will affect what direction everything is spinning in, but we'll get to that in a few minutes. So I'm just going to directly connect this up here. Again, didn't make a huge amount of difference there. Now I'm going to alligator clip this on to one here nice secure grip i don't want this uh this jumping around anywhere and on the second alligator clip right here so there we have one of our motors connected i'm going to do the same thing for the wheels over here except now we do have a black and a red uh, wire so i'm going to connect the red to that plus and the black to that minus um, I don't have the same color wires here. So this red is going to the blue. So the blue will connect into that positive. And the black is connected into the purple. So that's going to connect on to the negative here. And now we have a couple of motors wired up. Um, we see here we have a right side or sorry left side motor and a right side motor they're connected on here we want to make sure that these stay on the pads here Maybe. Let's see. 
secure them. They'd have to just move them just a touch to secure them good. So they're on good. These guys are good. They're not going anywhere. So now if we do happen to turn anything on accidentally, uh, it won't be a big problem. Now I'm going to connect in my uh, power bank right to this USB port here. Now, right now, nothing should happen. Uh, you'll see there's no lights on here. And you will see now this on off switch here, right here, actually controls what the power is gonna do from the power bank. So if we turn this on, it should come on. Hold on, let me make sure my power bank is on. Okay, turn my power bank on. So that's on, and you can flick that directly off on and off without any issue um, for right now i'm going to leave this off and until i'm ready to actually go i'm going to disconnect my power bank uh, again that's a safety thing we don't want any electricity running to these uh, for any possible issues that could come about we want to keep things safe so we do all of our wiring and everything without anything connected um, i hope this makes a bit of sense because now we're going to move on to the micro bit. Uh, I'm going to program this before I plug it in. Again, it's a safety thing. I don't want anything moving uh, when it shouldn't be moving, but it can be plugged in when programming. You just have to be very, very careful uh, with everything. So let me switch back into our programming environment here. So once again, when we go into our make code uh, website here, we're brought to this fantastic environment. We're going to create a new project. This is session six. So I'm going to call this session six. Now we are dealing with a couple of new things called motors, which you might not actually see anything here. Once again, we have to go to the extensions and add in the Inksmith Climate Action Kit um, extension here. Now we have a few new things. In particular, we have motors. Um, now, when I turn everything on, the very first thing I want to do is I want to make sure the motors are not moving. So when we first turn things on, I want everything to stop. Again, that's a safety thing. That's just going to outright stop our motors. We don't want them moving until we're ready for the moving, and we don't want them to just turn on and move. We want to make sure we're ready for them to move. Um, again, I like putting in the show string, the hello, uh, and you might be thinking, well, why are you putting the stop motors first? Well, that's because I don't want the motors going at all. So I want them to stop first. I want no signal to be sent to them first. Then we can show the string hello. Now, to make our motors move, uh, we're just going to use some motor and we can select here. We can turn the left motor on its own. We can turn the right motor on its own, or we can do them both. Now, the key with this, so I'm going to take these three guys out here. The key with this is we want to actually set an amount of time we want them to drive, or usually we want to set an amount of time we want them to drive. We don't just want to turn the left motor on for one run. You know, we want it to have a looping action. And we could do that by repeating this seven or eight times. But that doesn't really work well. I like using some things called loops. And in particular for this one, I like a repeat X amount of times. So I'm going to go with a repeat four times. And we're going to 
set the left motor at a certain speed. Um, and you'll see this is a drag bar that you can drag from negative 100 to 100. That tells you not only the speed, but the direction. So if it's a negative, it's going to spin one way. If it's a positive, it will spin the other way. Um, I'm going to put this at, say, negative 50 right now. And I want this to go for a little bit of time. So I'm going to put a little pause in here of maybe 500 milliseconds. I'm going to repeat this four times. So it's going to go through this four times. And what this should do is it should turn the left motor at a speed of negative 50 for two seconds. Now, this can be where we get a little bit of interest and a little bit of interesting things happen here. Um, watch what happens if I now put in the same thing, except I'm going to turn the right motor at a speed of 50. Let me just ditch that drive left, right for right now. And I'm going to again put this pause in for maybe, again, the same sort of thing. Um, I'm going to now upload this. So we should have the left motor spinning at a speed of negative 50 for about two seconds the right motor spinning at a speed of positive 50 for about two seconds. And we will see what should happen there. So let's now go right back into, let me share my full screen. We're gonna download this, get it over onto our micro bit. Show this in the folder, we'll bring up our micro bit and we will just, Click this guy, drag him over. Um, we're going to wait till that goes. And then we'll show you a little bit of how to connect it up here as well. But there is a little interesting thing that's going to happen here. So let me jump right here. So we should have this guy now. Okay, so he'll, he'll say hello. He's not connected to the motor, so nothing's going to go on them. But he says hello, so we know he's uh, in there. Now I'm going to disconnect him from the computer, put him into the expansion board, connect my power, uh, my USB power supply there, make sure that's turned on. Turn this guy on. And okay, it says hello. Now we have this motor going. And then this motor really went really quickly there, not for a long time. I wonder what happened there. Oh, I think there is an issue with my power supply. This is a bit of an old USB power bank, so I'm hoping it will work. Left motor here. And we went to the right motor. This is shutting off. Okay. I'm going to switch to using my USB uh, power here. Again, we're going to connect it. It's going to work the same way. This says hello. We have this, our left motor going at about 50. This one going at about 50. And it's going to repeat that. Let's see, they're both both spinning there. And it's it, it's safe, you know, they're not touching the ground, they're not coming out. But we just have each motor controlled that little bit. Now we got to be careful not to put our fingers in. We don't want to get hurt when we put by putting fingers in here or here. So this is how it is at 50. Now we can extend that speed, we can make it uh, faster. We can change the directions up a bit. Um, I'm going to turn this off here and disconnect this guy. We'll pop out our uh, micro bit. And let's go and see what else we can do in here.
Um, where am I? Let me see. Here we go. So in here, this did exactly what we wanted it to do. It went, spun the left motor for, for one direction uh, at about 50, then the right. Uh, we do run into some issues sometimes. Uh, it's not with this kit. This kit seemed to be amazing with that. Uh, if we don't put in a stop at the left motor here between these two, then it would just send the, it would keep it going. Um, we didn't seem to run into that issue. So that's amazing. Now, what I'm going to do here, I'm not a huge necessary fan over these guys um unless we're really wanting to control them independently i like using the drive left and right lock um and we can again change these speeds up here maybe this is going to be 100 maybe we want this one at oh negative 75 oh, we can type this in as well and then here, maybe we want this at negative 25. And let's say positive, oh, let's say positive 75. Um, just so that we can see, we can run both of these motors at the same time. You did see in the last time, it was only one running at a time. This one will have them both running at the same time. And it will change them, right? We're going to run for the first couple seconds, we're going to have the left one going at 100 in the positive direction and the right one going 75 in the negative, and then we're going to switch them up. Uh, so we'll be able to see some changes in here. So let me once again just download this onto here. Oh, I'm going to make sure I connect up my micro bit. And do our click and drag. Click and drag. And wait till this says hello before we reconnect everything up again. And then we'll have a few motors working. Okay. So we see this is saying hello. Let me just disconnect this guy. I'm going to plug him back in here. And then we're going to plug this guy in right here. Make sure our wires are clear from our motors. Then we're going to turn this on. You'll see this says hello here. And then let's see what happens. If both going and then they switch speed. So we do have them both turning at one time. You will notice on this guy, it's moving very, very, very slowly in that second one, almost not moving. And that's because we have it at a speed of 25. And 25 is just on the lower limit for this particular motor. But we can see we have both going, we can do it with one going. And again, you might be asking, well, why did I, I'm using the same USB cord. So why am I using that plugged into the board instead of just leaving it into the micro bit? And again, that comes down to what the micro bit can actually uh, send out. So let me zoom in here. The micro bit itself has a maximum voltage that it can supply of three volts. Now, three volts would be a the, the very low side to actually get these motors working. So we'd have to have it at full press. And even then it might not work right. So that's why we connect it into this full board here. Now the USB itself can supply up to five volts with, with ease. This here utilizes the full five volts to get these motors going. So I hope that makes a bit of sense as to why I'm doing it that way. Now we could do this in a lot of different ways and we're going to uh, look more when we look at some of the kit activities. 
of utilizing these motors with sensors and all of this. But one that I'm going to very quickly do, let me share my screen here again. Um, instead of this forever thing, um, I like using the buttons. So I'm going to say on button A pressed, I'm going to pull this out for button B. So when button A is pressed, we're going to have one motor go. On button B, we'll have the other. And we'll just get our motors put in here. So we'll have this guy going at, oh, let's, let's go full on for them, make it easy. And over here, the right. And from here, we're actually going to, we're really technically starting to get into using of sensors to get some things going here. So let's test this guy out now. Um, let me see. I hope this works. There's a few different things that we can, a few different issues that we can run into, but let me just get everything we want here on. Click and drag. Go. It does take a few seconds here, and the more complicated the programs get, a little bit longer it'll take to get onto the micro bit. Um, okay, so we have everything onto the micro bit. I'm gonna disconnect this guy, put him in here, reconnect my USB over here, and then turn him on. Again, we see the hello, and we should see no movement whatsoever until we push these buttons. And you'll see it's going to continuously go for a little bit because we didn't tell it to stop. Over here, we told this motor to stop but let this one go. So press, this guy's going. Press this guy, this guy will go. And we can feel, I mean, this one's a fan. We can feel air coming from it. We can see it kind of vibrating a little extra there. And there we go. I push both, kind of get a pulse until one takes over the other. Um, but this is where we can start actually looking into having motors doing something based on inputs. Um, which is going to be our next session there. Our next session might be a little bit of a longer one. We're going to go through and kind of construct some stuff. Now, we're not done with this session yet. I am going to say I'm done with the motors for right now. Let me disconnect this, pop this guy out, and I am going to disconnect the motors. So this is how we use our motors in a very uh, basic manner. I'm going to disconnect these guys, and this allows us to have some control of an output. Again, we included in this kit, there are those two sets of motors. There are a lot of other different uh, sets of motors. Uh, in a later session, I'm, I'm going to go over and show you uh, where this stuff can take you, uh, as this being its uh, starting place and then growing in or growing onto. Now, that being said, I'm gonna set these motors aside. We're gonna be done with them for, for uh, right now. But I do wanna introduce you to another type of, of motor as we call it. There's this little blue one, this kind of little blue box that we've included here. You zoom in there, that's been included in these kits, you see. This is something called a servo. This particular one's a micro servo. It's smaller than um, other servos. Uh, I've, I'll show you some other parts when we, when we get to bigger stuff. Um, but this is what's called a micro servo. It's a fairly small little servo. But this guy is a little motor. I mean, if you look inside there, you can kind of see that there is a motor in there. But this is a bit more of a controlled motor. A servo has a controlled output. 
that controls the angle at which this axle here, this final axle goes to. So the servo is a much more controlled point. Like you can, if you put your, the top weight piece on here, you can see it only moves through a certain range. Um, and that's because it's a servo, it's a dedicated specific range, which is approximately 180 degrees. So it has a controlled swing of about 180 degrees. Um, and that becomes very useful for positioning things. Uh, you'll also notice, uh, I just want to cover a quick term. You'll notice there's a few of these uh, white little things that come with the servo in the bags. These things pop on top of the, the servo axle here. These are called servo horns. Um, so if you hear me mention popping the servo horn on or changing a servo horn, that's what we mean. It's just these little plastic pieces. Um, I'm going to include, just put one on here. doesn't really matter which one. I just grabbed this one. It was the first one that I grabbed um, so that we can see the actual motion of these. Um, again here, we're going to wire this into the expansion board and run it through the micro bit. Now, when we wire this, we're going to notice there's three wires that come out of the servo. Uh, this uses a special type of signal. It's not just a power on or power off signal. It's a signal called a pulse width modulator, a PWM signal. So it has to be a very specific signal sent into an internal circuitry there that tells which angle this has to go to. So to do that, we actually need to connect all three wires here. Uh, on this particular one, it's a brown, a red, and an orange. Uh, typical ones are black, red, yellow, or brown, red, orange. Uh, I've seen some black, red, and white as well. Um, they all have a very identical wiring. The red one is the power supply. It needs a five volt power supply. The brown or black one is the ground and the orange or yellow or white one is the signal. So I'm going to grab our wires here now. You will notice here these connections require the pin to plug in. So we need the male to alligator clip connections. Um, I'm going to connect my red with a red one, my brown with a black wire, and my orange with a white wire. Again, it doesn't matter which one you, like which color the wire it is, you connect as long as you can keep track of which one is going where. So this red middle wire onto this red wire onto here, I'm going to connect into a power right here. And then this brown into black is going to go into a ground. We'll zoom out here in a minute so that we can see the full picture here. Yeah, we want to make sure it's just connected there. And then this orange onto the white we're going to go into this pin which i'm going to use the one right in between it's pin number zero so when we zoom out here we will see this servo connected so that this brown wire which goes into this black wire goes into this ground connection and then we have the middle red wire which goes into this middle red wire goes into this red wire into the power and then the end orange which connects into this white goes into the pin number um, once again here i'm going to just connect this guy onto a piece of wood i don't want it moving anywhere uh, just to be safe again here, we don't want this to kind of spin around and walk around here. So just give me one quick second. And let me connect this guy. 
Uh, again, I'm using tape here. I would not use tape if this was on a, on a bigger robot or pretty much anything else other than this type of uh, demonstration. Um, I would use something, maybe hot glue, or more likely I would screw this in. Okay, so now we have that just sitting right here. Try and organize this so that we can see it uh, pretty well. So now we have this thing called a servo, which we'll see how we can spin it. It is again a motor. So again, it does have some movement range, but it's a limited range. So with, with a motor, you know, we could see these guys would just spin all around no matter what continuously. Well, this guy will only go to a certain angle. Again, it's usually about 180 degree range. Um, but that's not always perfect. Sometimes it's a little more, some of them are a little bit less. Um, this guy's reasonably good at right around 180. Uh, so now let's go into our programming. Okay. So let me get rid of all of this, uh, motor related stuff. And now we're going to focus on this servo, that this servo block here. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to start with this purple turn servo at P02 degrees block. So first off, we have this. We want to make sure we're connected to the right pin. We do have our servo connected to zero, so I'm going to leave that at zero. Um, I want this to start at zero degrees. So we are going to just have the servo go to the zero degrees, which is the middle point here. And then I'm going to go um, and put in our blocks here, very similar to how we uh, connected our motors or did our motor work, except this time I'm using the servo block instead of the motor block. And I'm going to put this guy, let's say at first we want this to go to negative 90 degrees. I like, I always like testing the range. I am going to put a pause in here for maybe one second. We're going to repeat that four times. So it's going to go four seconds. Very important to put a pause in here. If you don't put a pause here, then this servo might not have enough time to actually reach the 90 degrees. Um, and when you're adjusting your servo ever, if you don't give it enough time to move before you're asking it to do something else, uh, it, it won't reach that range. So right now, we just want it to hit the 90 degrees. So we're going to give it time to do that. Now I'm going to uh, clone this and instead of going to 90 degrees, I'm going to check the other range right up to positive 90. So what I want this servo to do is first go to zero, wherever that might be, then go down to 90, up to 90. So we should see that full range of motion here. This allows us to really depict exactly where we want our servo to go and where we want things to go. Now that might not sound like a crazy important thing right now. It's going to get very important. So let me just load this guy up here. So again, with the same thing, I don't have it connected to anything now and there's no power on here. So nothing's moving. Yep. Do want to click and drag this guy over. And here we go. Give it a minute. Once the micro bit starts saying hello, then we know we are going again. So I'm going to now disconnect, plug this guy in. 
plug this guy in for its power. We're going to turn him on. There we see the hello. We see this moved right to its zero position. And now it's going to go 90. Wait a few seconds. Go to about 90 again here. 90 here. And it's a little bit over 90 here. So this range is a little bit higher. Now I do want to point one thing out here. You see at the end here, it does that slow little tweak out to there. That means that the signal that's getting sent to this for the 90 is a little bit too big for its full range. And that's okay. That will happen with different servos. Um, its max range for this guy might actually only be at 85 before we get too much of that turn there. But we do see we have a controlled position here. Now, if I just reset this, you'll see it goes right back to the middle, to that zero position. That's at zero. That's a negative 90. And all the way to about a positive 90, a little bit more than that here. Um, and that's all normal. That's all exactly how we want it to happen. Now, if we want to really tweak this, we said 90 was too much. Maybe 85 is a better number. So we'll do that download again here. Let me disco, disco. And then we're going to upload this guy on here. Which number are we at? Four. Just making sure I'm putting the right one on here. Give it a second and then this guy says hello. Let's get everything connected back up. Here we go. And again, again saying hello. It's in the middle here. Negative 90. That's much better. See, it's right very firm at the end there. Um, it's not quite a full 90, but we could probably add a couple, maybe nine, maybe 86 or 87 in there, um, which we would tweak that out and we could go. Now, the biggest question for all of this is, what does that really mean we can do? Well, we can actually turn our servo to any number of degrees. And that might just sound like, well, okay, we can just make it go to a certain number of degrees, but that's gonna be critically important whenever we want to maybe move a sensor around or look for something, or maybe we're opening a gate or maybe we're um, sorting something. We can change all of these numbers, all that we want. But maybe we want this to, I don't know, maybe swing. So let me first just disconnect this. Um, maybe instead of just a regular servo from, I don't know, uh, maybe instead of going to 90 and all this, maybe we want it to swing around a little bit. So let me add this guy in here. We put this four with this index, which we can really just make it a variable. And we can set this, this says from zero. Maybe this is zero to 90. And what's this, what this will do is it will take it from zero and swing it to 90 degrees. Um, again, this is just with a general variable. We'll go 0 to 90, 0, 90, 0, 90. And maybe we don't want 90. Maybe we want that 85, because remember we had that, uh, that issue with the 90. But we'll take it and swing. And let's just see what we can do with this. 
So this is just another option for what we can do. We can make this swing. Again, just adding different blocks and things in. So let me show this out. Let me get to where we're going. Go. Let this upload. We're gonna we're gonna notice a few things in here. We'll pay attention when we start doing this. Okay. And that says hello. Let me just plug this guy back in. Here. Here turn this guy on so again he says hello there put him into zero and let's see what happens as we go slow ticks slowly going as it goes through because it's adding one number to it then it went all the way back to the zero once it hit that 85 so this is just um, almost like a water sprinkler system, right? You know, the t -t 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 and that's, that's the sort of thing that's happening here. We're telling it to increase through and go. Um, and that's another set of things we can do here. We can also use a whole lot of different sensors in here. Um, I'm going to let me ditch this. Let me go into using the buttons. I like using the buttons whenever we talk about sensors because they're essentially sensors, but they're very easy uh, to look at here. Oh, not motors, we want servos. So let's say we'll put our servos in here. Um, again, I'm gonna put the pause in here as well. So we have time to get to that amount and let's say half a second should be fine there and another half a second here um, and maybe when we push this button we want this to go to negative 30 degrees say and this guy let's say positive 45 degrees so when we push one button it'll go negative 30 and the other button should go to 45 but we should also make note because we don't have anything in this forever once we push it to there it should stay there so let's download this guy and i'll get him uploaded on and we'll see what we're gonna look at here oh gotta make sure i plug him in huh. even i forget all of this sometimes let's make sure we plug him in Get him going. Here we go. Okay. And let's see what we have here. So let me reconnect all of this guy. You know, it might seem like, oh man, you're reconnecting so much, but that's okay. That's how we keep things safe. It's on, it says hello. This guy's at zero. I'm going to push button A, goes to 30. He doesn't go back to the zero. And if I keep pushing A, it doesn't go another 30. Now, if I push B, it goes over there. A, B, A, B. And that's doing exactly what we're telling it to do. You know, up here in our program, we just said if it if we push button A, it goes to 30 degrees or negative 30 degrees, so 30 degrees here. If we push button B, it goes over here. And because we didn't tell it to return to zero or go anywhere else, that's all it's going to do. That's all it will do. So this is a really good look at some motors and some motor setups here. Um, I think this is a good place to stop for today. So 
we did go into different motors, different sensors, um, or we've done different sensors already. We've gone through all of these components on an individual level. And we've seen, uh, I'm pretty sure we've gone through all the components in the kit that we gave out uh, and that Inksmith kit. So the next step here is to start combining things together. We're going to take a look in our next sessions of combining some sensors and these motors and taking a look at what Inksmith uh, has already developed for us with different activities that they have. And uh, we'll take it all from there. But for today, I think we're pretty good. Uh, again, if anybody has any questions or comments, concerns, any issues, feel free to contact me at any time. And we will make sure to get back to you as soon as we can. I hope this is, uh, I hope you guys are enjoying this and I hope uh, your students will enjoy the opportunity to learn some of this stuff. Um, I think we have a couple more sessions, at least I have plans for a couple more sessions, one being uh, going through some of those Inksmith activities, actually putting some stuff together, getting a, getting a driving robot around. It's always a bit of my fun. Um, and at some point uh, in another session, I might just take you through and, and kind of show you some of the stuff that, I, that, that I've got here that uh, my students have done over the years uh, with, with the, um, the mindset is, you know, we, we started with a kit too. We started knowing nothing and uh, we've developed to where we are. So I'll show you guys where you can potentially go with all of this. Um, but for now, I think uh, just keep playing around with them and uh, keep having some fun. And I will see you guys next time.